Good evening guys, and welcome to this video where I will be talking about one specific match from NXT tonight. If you have not watched this, it is the Women's Number 1 Contender Battle Royal. If you have not watched it, please pause this video and go watch the Battle Royal. I will give you exactly 10 seconds to click off of this video starting now. And there we go. In this match, the winner and the new num and the the new number one contender and the very first challenger for the brand new women's champion Tiffany Stratton will be Chase U's Thea Hale. And at the end of the match, eliminating both Cora Jade, which I'm not shocked at this point when it comes to Cora blowing opportunity. And sh a shocking appearance by free agent Dana Brooke. First off, I want to say I love that NXT and mainly WWE has been really knowing how to use the term free agent now. Kind of, they kind of didn't. They kind of just made a joke out of it with Heath Slater back in what 2016, 2016, maybe 2017, around there when Heath was and Rhino started tag teaming together. But now you have guys you normally see on Raw or SmackDown coming to NXT. The three that have shown up the most, Baron Corbin, who got one hell of a promo tonight. You we truly have seen the resurrection of a good Baron Corbin. Positively, I only saw this one match because I had the most... There was a main event, I think it was a main event, uh, Trick Williams and Corbin. Because the match was supposed to be Ilya Dragunov, but he was attacked by Braun Breaker. Off topic. Dana Brooke and Cora and Thea were the last three competitors in this battle royal. Thea Hale won. And I saw in the comments of this video, so many people, more than likely Cora cultists, saying that it was a horrible decision to make Thea the number one contender. Let me explain, in my opinion, why NXT did this. For the past number of weeks, NXT has been focusing a little more on Thea Hale. Not exactly in matches, but in segments, they've been focusing a lot more on Thea in the Chase U segments. And the, she's been getting a lot more development in these kind of things. She's now taking stuff more seriously. She still has that crazy hyperness to her, but she's a lot more... She's trying to be a lot more serious in the ring. The reason I say that it is a good idea to pick Thea... Actually, before I go, let me just say this, obviously. Tiffany Stratton will, of course, be retaining the NXT Women's Championship. There's no... I will be... Not lying. I will be gunning for Thea to win the belt. Because I love Thea Hale. I love underdogs. And Chase U has... God damn it. It's grown on me since Andre Chase debuted in the breakout tournament. But, yeah. Tiffany will be obviously be retaining. More often than not, champions will... Brand new champions will more than likely always retain their title. Unless you're Johnny Gargano in NXT. <laughs> But, um, I don't think this match is mainly about Tiffany's first title defense. I don't see it focusing on her, like, most championship matches. In my opinion, this title match is a pivotal moment in the career for Thea Hale. Because she's usually always just looked at as the third member of Chase U's group. Whether it was Andre and Bodhi, or now with, in the past number of years two years, I think, whatever, the pet, with the group being Andre and uh, Duke, even including, like, Wesley and Tyler Bates sometimes, Thea's always kind of just been in the background of it. So this match is to see if Thea Hale can now be con considered in this title picture, because I'll be, I'll agree that Thea Hale more than likely is looked at as a joke, kind of, or like, the put over talent where women will just have a good match with her and beat her. It's very rare that she does win matches, but that's what I think this match is going to be. It's going to be a match where NXT will see if Thea Hale is ready and if she is good enough to have these kind of be in this title picture. This match is more about proving that Thea Hale is ready. And that's weird to say for a title match, but. It's the best choice they have. Put her under the bright spotlight of a title match. 
whether it be on NXT or at a pay per view, more than likely, it'll more I think it'll be next week, or hell, maybe it will be at the paper next NXT pay per view, and they might build it up. I would like that actually, for them to start building more for Thea to tackle this title match, even if it's just two weeks. Give her two weeks of hype up. Give her two weeks of matches either on NXT with segments or matches on, I hate to say this, on NXT level up. But, yeah, that's it, basically my thing. This match is basically a proving ground match for Thea. Since, <sighs> Tiff, I think Tiffany went through this as well. Every woman, every man will go through these big matches where you don't normally think they'd be in them. But they prove why they are in the division. I think this will be the I'm here for a reason match for Thea Hale. Kind of a good example of this that just kind of sparked in my mind was a ta NXT Tag Team Championship match. It was Roderick Strong and Kyle O'Reilly versus Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch. Up until that, the true ending of that match, Lorcan and Birch were looked at as the, oh, why these guys? Why not this tag team? Why are they here? They don't deserve this. But by the end of that match, and even during that match, Lorcan and Birch had earned the respect and the love of the NXT universe. I think that's exactly what they're trying to do with Thea for this. Why, for seeing if they can get not just a good match out of Thea, but to see, first off, she's already popular as all hell. But this is to see if she is at that level. I hope that makes sense. Because again, this is just my takeaway from this. This is my theory, idea of why they chose Thea. She's been hyped, she's been a little more focused on. She needs this proving ground match. And she's a great first challenger for Tiffany. Because not just is it a good opportunity for Thea to prove that she does, it's a good match to see that she does belong here, but Tiffany is, it's the perfect back and forth, uh, I don't want to say feud, but great first match, uh, title defense match for Tiffany, since they are the complete total opposites. That's a, it's a good choice. Plus, I believe they've had matches together, or at least a match together. Even if it's just a tag match. I think they definitely have wrestled before. And it makes perfect sense with Tiffany being the spoiled rich daddy's girl. And any this is just my thing with this. Anyone who says Tiffany's gimmick is so like great and so... She's do, for, I agree, she does great character work. But it's the same thing as... And is, you can look at it as the same thing as the Bellas. The only difference... The one difference... From any other spoiled diva gimmick that WWE has done is that Tiffany is a daddy's girl. She has a she has that rich dad that did every that paid for her and every crap like that. Every company will have one of these characters. Just like if you have a, a wrestler whose gimmick is rich, they'll all be a freaking jackass. Sorry. I'm swallowing there for a second. Yeah. Hope you guys can at least consider what I said for why Thea Hale is the number one contender. Have a good night, guys.